Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that is going to show you a very effective and very old school method of fertilizing the hungriest of all of your plants. And so I'm going to say some things about it, and then I'm going to take you out into the field and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So what we're doing here is we are going to supercharge the life in the soil. Because as many of you know, if you watch this channel, but just hear it again, no matter what you put into the soil, it cannot be directly absorbed by the plant. So no amount of manure or blood meal or bone meal or azomite or any of the, the uh, leaves or grass clippings or fish or anything, none of that can directly be absorbed by the plant. So it all must first pass through the digestive system of so many different microorganisms. The fungi and the bacteria go in and they eat that first. And then the protozoa and the nematodes eat the bacterias. And then the arthropods eat those and all of that. The complex web of interrelatedness and every step along the way, nutrients are unlocked by that process. And so the faster that process can happen, the more nutrients become available to the plant. And so what we are going to do with this method is we are going to put a certain number of things in a ratio inside of the hole and that is going to uh, supercharge the community of microorganisms. It's going to attract loads of earthworms but also the bacterias and the fungi will begin to break down the materials and that activity, the faster it happens, the more nutrients and the faster they become plant available. And so this method works really well for things that are hungry, like the tomatoes, the peppers, the squash, and the watermelons. Definitely for the squash and watermelons, this is a very good technique because they will put out all kinds of roots, but then they will put roots down into this um, uh, community of, of plant available nutrients that is being created for them by the microorganisms. And it fertilizes pretty much all season long. So it's a very effective method and once you do it, you don't have to apply anything else. So this is for you guys that don't want to make the liquid fertilizers and stuff or you just want an extra boost or your uh, soil is not really that fertile, uh, then I recommend this definitely. Tomatoes love this. So let us just get right into it and I will show you exactly what to do and then we will come back and I will explain briefly why we've chosen each of those ingredients and what they do. Okay, my friends, first thing we want to do is to determine where we're going to put our very hungry plants. Now, this could be squash or cucumbers or peppers or many other things, watermelons. But here we are going to plant uh, Cherokee purple tomato plants, and they love this technique. So what we're going to do is uh, take this place where I just cut down the cover crop a few days ago. It was a winter rye cover crop. And we're just going to take out a plug because we're not trying to till up the soil or anything like that. We just want to take us out a plug. And uh, we're trying to disturb the soil as little as possible here. So we are going to dig down with our hand uh, if we need to. Use an implement, that's fine. But we want to dig about two feet because it's important to be about six inches, uh, at least six inches below the depth at which you're going to plant something. If you're a foot below it, that is fine as well because the roots will reach down for it. So we're going to go down about two feet and you can see how nice that soil is with them aggregates. And because my soil is so nice, look at that big fat boy, and my, so my soil is so nice, see how deep those uh, winter rye roots are going? It wouldn't be entirely necessary for me to do this because my soil is already so thriving, but I'm doing it to show you guys. Okay, so the next step is we are going to utilize some fish. We're going to go catch us some fish and we're going to fry it up. And I like to eat as much of it as possible, the crappie, the bluegill, the bass, all of that kind of stuff. They're everywhere around here. And then we will take whatever is left and we are going to throw it into the hole. And that's why it's important that we're at least six inches below our planting level. Then we're going to take an egg, a farm fresh uh, fertilized egg, and we're going to throw it in there. And I thought it was going to break like it usually does, but this time we got to break it with the crowbar. Uh, because if we didn't break it, it's going to take a long time before it decomposes. So uh, then we're going to take some coffee grounds. At least a handful or two is even better because the worms are just like you and me and they love a little shot of the caffeine. It supercharges their activity is what I have found over the years. And so then we're going to put uh, this uh, organic matter back on top of it. And you can see here in this plug, this is about a foot and a half deep. 
and you can see how the winter rye roots have gone all the way down and that is why we do not till after we have a cover crop like this because all those little roots are going to become airways as they decompose and aerate the soil and break up the soil so we just put the plug back in and then we are going to cover it with something now here I've got a sheet of black plastic and I'm gonna cover that and then weight it down and this is going to you can do this anywhere from one day to one month and it will all work really well to warm up the soil in the uh, early season like this so then whenever you're ready you just take off the uh, uh, plastic or whatever material you're using and then uh, if you were planting seeds you would just plant them directly into each of these little mounds you would plant the squash or the zucchini or whatever it is that is really hungry but uh, in this case we are going to plant a Cherokee purple tomato plant so we're gonna dig down about a foot foot and a half give or take and then we're gonna take the tomato plant yes this one needs some water but I'm gonna take off all the branches below my hand and I'm gonna plant it as deep as you see my hand because uh, tomato plants are one of the kind that can put roots out from anywhere along the stem so we're gonna bury it about a foot and a half you see that's six inches above where the fish material was and then we're gonna water it in well and watch it grow okay so after doing this you can plant any time pretty much immediately or the best way to do it is to do this two to three weeks before planting just make sure that you do it deep enough and then when we plant Remember, we're, we're not going to go down all the way. We're going to leave at least six inches of soil in between the decomposing fish and egg uh, mixture and the roots of the plant. So why do we choose the fish? Because fish has been used in agriculture for thousands of years and for a very good reason. Because it has easily broken down proteins by the microorganisms. They can break it down the proteins in the fish easily and effectively into amino acids and other things that the plant can use. The bones of the fish have got calcium, phosphorus, all kinds of good stuff. The fish has got almost everything that you need, okay? And it's also got a high amount of nitrogen. And remember that nitrogen is the uh, gasoline for the engine of decomposition, which is the bacteria primarily, and also the fungi, but th the bacteria need the nitrogen. All right, and so this is what's going to supercharge it. The egg, of course, has all kinds of good proteins that will get broken down into plant available uh, nutrients. It's also the yolk has got all kinds of different uh, um, nutrients. All the vitamins and minerals required for the formation of life are within the egg yolk. Uh, and the coffee grounds, of course, just supercharge everything. The earthworms, it's something about it. The earthworms really love the coffee grounds. It like supercharges them with a little bit of caffeine jolt. So there you go, my friends. Uh, that's the best way that I know of to supercharge the hole before planting. So if you feel like you gained something from the video, give it a thumbs up. Also share the video with anyone that needs this knowledge to your Facebook groups or whatever it is. Share the videos and leave a comment. First thing that comes to mind, just share your thoughts and your experience. Uh, oh, and yes, you can bury pretty much any animal in this way. You know, a chicken carcass, a rat, something like that. Yes. Um, but it will take much longer to break down, although that's still good. So I knew I would be getting that question. I'm glad I thought of it. So check out the Garden Like a Viking Instagram account, guys, where I'm doing daily posts and real uh, um, to the story and stuff like that about things I don't want to make a whole video about. So check that out. And I will direct you to this playlist here, which will show you a number of different ways of preserving the harvest for this upcoming year. So if you are thinking about what to grow, watch these videos so you know how to preserve them.